And the next very important definition is consumer. Of course, when it comes to Consumer Protection Act, the very important definition is consumer. Here also uh, there is a change which I already told, you know, Section 2, Clause 7 in the consumer definition, uh, in the explanation, uh, buying through or, you know, availing service through offline, uh, that is offline or online transactions through electronic means has been introduced. So that means e-commerce uh, purchase has been clearly introduced under the definition, uh, you know, consumer under Section 2, Clause 7, which has an explanation of added, which says that, you know, includes offline or online transactions through electronic uh, means or by teleshopping or direct selling or multi-level marketing. So these type of things have been now been introduced in the uh, definition of the term consumer. That means any person who buys or avails a service through electronic means uh, or through teleshopping or direct selling or multi-level marketing will also now be considered as a considered as a consumer. Especially we have to highlight that e-commerce because that is the era where we live. You know most of the purchases has been especially mobile phones, you know electronic gadgets have now been and of most of the household things now we purchase through electronic mode so now you are being very well categorized as a consumer also now the next change is in the the definition deficiency which uh, deal in section 2 clause 11 which says that it includes uh, you know uh, act of negligence causing loss or injury to consumer and deliberate withholding of relevant information so this is a new piece of information which has been added the clause added to the def deficiency def uh, you know definition in the new act which clearly says that you know any deficiency by a service provider with respect to with respect to act of negligence even though it is negligent act which causes loss or injury to the consumer then he will be he will be uh, will be caught under this act in the criteria of you know, deficiency in service and of course deliberate withholding of uh, relevant information is also been categorized as as a deficiency in service thanks to that new definition e-commerce to clause 16 nothing to say that uh, we already explained that you know digital uh, products including services include digital products over a digital or electronic network is now been covered so e-commerce is now been specially specifically defined in the new law friends the two definitions which i like to highlight separately so that's why i parked it separately is goods under section 2 clause 21 and service uh, uh, very important uh, you know definitions which which you have to speak into see goods uh, is a very important uh, definition where you know uh, which says that new definition says that uh, it includes any kind of mold property and includes the term food so food is been now been categorized as uh, a goods uh, as per the new consumer protection act is concerned if you if you think you know the earlier law 1986 law the definition was like you know goods means a goods referred to under uh, the sale of goods act 1930 but now we have a separate definition which says that you know every kind of uh, mobile property will be categorized as uh, goods and which includes food thanks to that coming to service definition uh, maybe there is a typography level the section number is uh, different but at the same time service definition the same definition which is in the 1986 law in the new law service definition has not been changed much but a new term has been used in the service list that is telecom telecom services now is been introduced in the service sector so it has been service definition so it gives a new thing that you know if you are phone connection or your telephone connection network issues the things which you have you know uh, in another is charges in your mobile phones etc now been questioned because this can be categorized as a service under the consumer protection act so if there is any anomaly imperfectness or things in in, in it it can be charged as a it can be categorized as a deficiency in service and clearly you know uh, you know uh, prosecutable under this the new law friends these are the list of definitions which i thought to brought you through this video uh, it is not the list is not conclusive but there are many other uh, definitions but this list throws light to the intricacies of the new law so that's it so now you will ask me sir what are the uh, major enhancements in the new law so uh, in earlier uh, few minutes before i discussed about the four new things here i am going to discuss about the enhancements in the new law that is already there there are some some symptoms in the early, early law but a little bit more detailed in the new law one is uh, the unfair trade practice and unfair contracts you will appreciate that utp unfair trade practice is the crux of the consumer protection law uh, apart from the defect and deficiency in the goods or services you bought so utp has been broadened here a lot of things has been now introduced three more categories we introduced more details has been introduced in the utp concept which i will discuss uh, within minutes second one point is of course the limit of pecuniary jurisdiction you all know that you know the forum 
to give complaint uh, for redressal of your your dispute uh, dis uh, your your complaint is basically categorized into three in the early law one is the district forum second one is the state commission third third one is the national commission here also there are three same forums but the name of district forum has been changed to district commission so that the three uh, forum uh, forums now can be spelled in the same way like you know district uh, consumer dispute redressal commission next one is state a di a dis dispute consumer redressal commission and of course third one is the national consumer dispute redressal commission so all the three three things has been now named equally the pecuniary limit has been already uh, you now there was a limit but that has been now enhanced now the limit is up to 1 crore you can if the value of the goods and the compensation is up to 1 lakh 1 crore you can go, uh, go to the district commission and with 1 crore to 10 crore bracket you have to you can go to the state commission and above 10 crore huge amount right above 10 crore you can approach the national commission so thanks to the law that because the bracket has been now been enhanced and third one is with regarding to the penalty for misleading advertisement there were already uh, symptoms and there were already mentioning about the misleading advertisement the early law 1986 law but in the new law it has been now broadened now the new law has been introduced uh, with respect to the penalties for brand ambassadors or endorsers of advertisement endorsers of product celebrities will come under this bracket clearly cricket stars and the other celebrities who endorse products in the media uh, through advertisement or press media or you know web media or even the electronic media in tvs uh, things who endorse this product and pushes people to buy will also now come under the bracket of the penalty provisions the provisions i will discuss later but this is the new enhancements in the law and the very important enhancement in the law is apart from the dispute resolution forums at the district level state level and of course the national level now you have the scope for mediation the district commission has been empowered to refer your matter to the mediation if there is a scope for settlement between you and the trader so need not need not to say that you know unlike every consumer and every trader manifested to be taken to the to the district uh, you know the disputed forums and to make you more complicated and the things now there is a new option that you can opt uh, before the honorable district commission of redressal forum is that you can opt for a mediation if there is a scope for settlement so we can settle a little bit out of court and of course settle the matter accordingly if it is not working obviously it will be in the normal channel so these are the four enhancements which i believe that you know will give more teeth to the new consumer protection act 2019 friends saying this now i'll be moving a little bit detail on each and every department which i had been discussing now unfair trade practices this is the very uh, you know essence of the new law you will appreciate you know any consumer protection law maybe earlier uh, law and the new law itself the very interesting point is with respect to the unfair trade practice basically what is an unfair trade practice an unfair trade practice is a trade practice for promoting sales of goods or services by adopting by adopting unfair methods by adopting deceptive methods i repeat what is an unfair trade practice? That was the same in the early law also. It is a trade practice for promoting sales of goods or service by adopting unfair methods or deceptive practices. So this is, I think, a number of things are there in the market. You can uh, well appreciate, you will see that, you know, overpricing, misleading advertisements, uh, poor quality of the product, quantity standards are not met, industrial standards are not met, hazardous products are sold without a precaution, without safety measures, without instruction, using your personal information, misleading you by gift schemes and the things, everything you may know that any student or any professional who has read the 18, 1986 law will appreciate there are many case laws also with respect to the unfair trade practices followed by the traders in general. Friends, in the new law also there is a list, huge list of unfair trade practices, but there are some new things which has been introduced. That is the very interesting thing false representation stand in with respect to standard size model quality quantity hoardings refusal to sell these were already there in the early law but there is a that has been reproduced in the new law also second category is very very important selling of old goods uh, second hand goods uh, rebuilt goods uh, renovated goods as a new good because a new product is a clear case of UTP under the new law. So friends, this is a very, very important point, especially when you buy through online methods like e-commerce. This is going to be a very important thing. Please be aware that the new law provides uh, this category, this, this is, the, this practices have been categorized as an unfair trade practice and it can be a ground of a complaint by a consumer and can get the remedy under the new law. What is that? Selling old goods 
or second hand goods or rebuilt goods or renovated goods as a new goods as a new product you may seen maybe most of this people has been encountered this thing in the local market even in the online markets so now that is being categorized as an unfair trade practice and third one is false claim as to the benefit of a product you know that many uh, uh, you know vendors or many products give advertisements of this multiple uses uh, multiple things you know the different use like in even mobile cam phones are now sold on the basis of the camera quality they say it is a selfie it's good they say the night mode is very good they say you know fast moving objects can be clicked so these are the you know a lot of lot of things are been happening in the market now the new law clearly puts a, a catch on that says that false claims about the benefit of a product will also be categorized as an unfair trade practice and of course false claim of the use of a product so it is not about the benefit in the use of the product and of course the need of the product even though the consumer does not need that but the trader or through the advertisement the trader may push that product to you saying that this has x benefit or y benefit or is it benefit by attracting with that words you may purchase that and ultimately when you use that you will end up in 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 sorrow you will end up in 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 a situation that it is not working as they demanded or, or as they claimed in the advertisement so these type of claims of and the benefits these type of false claims of uses of the product is now categorized as an unfair trade practice and misleading advertisements obviously you know that a lot of things are coming into it uh, misleading advertisements uh, with respect to the product or services however which which is harmful to the you know consumer is clearly brought under the concept of unfair trade practice i appreciate that you know already there was some symptoms of they are mentioning about in the 1986 law also but the bracket has been now been brought at so these are the utps a little bit already there but new things like you know selling uh, old goods or second hand goods as a new goods is a new category uh, of unfair trade practice and of course uh, trying to selling a product saying giving false claims and giving false you know uh, you know claims with respect to the use and the utility of their product is now categorized as unfair trade practice here this is very important thing uh, we have to look into is you know this three new category has now been introduced also been introduced in the category of utp which is very important from a consumer point of view not only really from the from a academic point of view not only really for practical practice point of view but for a, being a citizen being a consumer we all i and me you know we all every day on a day to day basis we are a consumer basically we buy a number of things for a day to day life uh, for of a day to day you know moment of life for enjoyment for entertainment for eating purpose right for survival purpose for growth everything you know pin to pistol we buy uh, i mean you know from from small things to big things we buy we, we we buy on a day to day basis friends these three new category of unfair trade practice is very interesting to note because this is a new turn in the in the consumer protection you know domain legislative domain one is uh, the new law puts puts an option that the defective goods has to be taken back by the uh, by the trader the take back the goods which is defective and you will get a refund and if the cash memo or the bill or invoice does not specify a, a refund date then it it is deemed as 30 days so this is going to be a very important thing so if any goods you bought is a defective thing you just uh, you can now uh, return back to the, uh, the, the the person who sold that and if he is not accepting it will be an issue and he has to repay repay the money that is the refund the money and the refund period is already if it is not stated in the bill or the invoice or as per the arrangement then 30 days is the default period that is going to be a very interesting thing second one is not issuing bill cash memo receipts there is a this is a common practice in local market that you know the the vendor does not give you the the proper receipt or vendor does not give issue you a bill or even if the cash receipts now friends this is now categorized this practice is now categorized as an unfair trade practice now you can move to the district commission or the state commission or the national commission as the case may be and get the remedy for the same and Uh, third category which is been introduced as the new category is disclosing your personal information given by you to a trader given by you to a manufacturer given by you to a seller of a product in conference you may you may have experience that you have shared lot of personal information while you enter a shop where you while you where you purchased a product and they may misuse this information now misusing this type of information by a vendor which you gave them at the at the time of purchasing a product is been categorized as a unfair trade practice apart from the unfair trade practice already there in the 1986 law and apart from the unfair trade practice we already discussed these new three categories has been introduced in the new law which is really great